Hey everyone, welcome to this video. This week I'm going to be talking about bug bounty investments, but not money investments. Today I'm talking about time investments, like things that take up your time that are completely free, but they will make you a better hacker in the long run. Um, I'm going to be covering five of them today. Let me know if you want me to talk about more and you want me to do more of this sort of stuff. I was kind of low-key inspired. Um, this video is very kindly sponsored by Integrity. Um, Integrity is a bug bounty platform like HackerOne and BugCrowd. It's smaller, it focuses on European customers. They're huge supporters of the bug bounty community. You've heard me talk about it so much. They don't just sponsor my content, they sponsor other people's content. They are really big in giving back to the community and making this community amazing. Uh, which is why I love working with them. I know a lot of people have already signed up um, and I've really started to find their first bug, got bounties, have gotten crates of Red Bull, um, participate in XSS challenges. I'm really, I'm so happy for you all. I love it when I see people tagging me and stuff, tagging me about what bugs they found, how they're getting on, um, what targets they're looking at. There's even been discussions in my Discord about what to hack on integrity. And honestly, um, it makes me so happy to see if you want to sign up as well, you can use my link on screen. That's go.integrity.com forward slash KT. It's also in the video description. Um, again, that's go.integrity.com forward slash KT. Now, I can't reasonably make this video without talking about the inspiration. Now, if you're not familiar uh, with the rat, this is the XSS rat. He makes really good bug bounty related videos. He's only got 4,000 subscribers. Now, we should be raiding him, seriously. He makes really good content. He is your uncle rat. He's just like chilling with the rest of us, trying to find bugs. I love how relatable his videos are. He doesn't try and be an expert. He's just learning like everybody else. Um, and what he kind of covered was these kind of like investments in cash. So paying for burp. Um, but what I really want to talk about today, and I think he did a great job covering it, by the way. I'm not trying to throw shade. He's an amazing creator. He's great. Love him to death. Um, but I want to talk about time investments. So Rat covered quite a lot of bug bounty specific investments, a lot of investments that you can make for your um, practice. I really want to cover time investments. That is things that you can do now that will make you a better bug, bug bounty hunter in the future. They don't need money. They just need your time. Um, so instead of focusing on money, let's focus on spending our time well, not our money. So what are they? So my first piece of advice is to become part of a community. My second is to teach others. My third is to understand the way you work. My fourth, to learn a lot and focus when you need to. And five is to take notes. So that is the five tips. Uh, that is the too long, didn't want to watch. So if you'd like to know more and like to know more about my thoughts, please do continue watching. So one, which is being part of a community. Now, being part of the community can be a huge time investment, like whether that's Discord, Twitter, um, whether that is like Slack groups now that have started up, like these little ones for uh, Germany, Australia have started up. But it can be so motivating to be surrounded by other hackers. I talked before in one of my videos about immersing yourself into bug bounties like you would immerse yourself into a foreign language. Um, and, you know, watching content about it, talking to people, um, just like you would for foreign language, but being part of a community can be so motivating, so helpful, and you pick up things that you wouldn't normally expect. So I don't like XSS vulnerabilities. I'm really bad at XSS. I'll be the first to admit it. But you know what? Being part of my Discord, um, Ronnie is a fantastic fantastic XSS hunter. The guy can get through any WAF. Um, and he did a stream recently, and I will actually include his link in the description if you want to go check him out, um, where he was going through these XSS challenges and I was hooked. I was trying to give it a go myself. I wouldn't normally look at an XSS challenge because I don't really like XSS as a vulnerability. But actually watching him really inspired me to kind of think a bit differently and I've changed my mind a little bit. I've really learned from other people on my Discord, you know, it's not just me being the expert and other people listening to me, I've actually really learned from others about bug bounty that I didn't really know or consider. Uh, and plus, you know, even my Discord, we have collaboration channels, I found people to collaborate through, through communities on HackerOne, um, you can read other people's resources, you can share resources, and again, it kind of just broadens your mind to 
um, what else you can do. So it's not just about doing one thing, it's about doing lots of different things in bug bounties um, and being exposed to them, even if you're not that interested. And sometimes that means, you know, I have I had Burt Pro, so I loaded up and um, make a POC for somebody, right? It's a commitment, yeah, but you know what? It's kind of a great commitment if you want something like that um, in terms of like getting access to people who have Burt Pro to make a CSRF um, POC for you. And again, you know, it's not just about seeing people who have lots of money, right? It's not just about the kind of feeling envious of others. It's about being part of something and helping motivate and, and lift each other up. And I hope that my Discord can do that to start with. But there are other like there are other communities. Hacker 101, Bug Crowd, both have Discords. Um, there's a hashtag bug bounty and bug bounty tips on Twitter. Like this is not just the only way to do it. The other one is teaching others. Now, this, as you might recognise, is my YouTube channel. Um, and actually, I've become a better bug hunter just because I've sat and explained things to people. When I start to make a video, I don't fully understand the topic. Um, just because, you know, I'm not an expert in all things bug bounties. Um, but you know what? By the end, I know so much about what I'm talking about. For me, it's been a huge help in learning bug bounty has just been oh my god, I understand so much now, like I, I, they say if you can explain it to somebody then you really understand it, and I completely agree, like I feel like I understand bug bounty so much more now, I've sat and, and with others and helped others and tried to um, share my knowledge, and for me, like, I've also looked at vulnerabilities I wouldn't normally look at, even if a video doesn't quite make it to production, because not every video does, um, there's a few videos that are forever in kind of the pre-production phase. One such one is a video on request smuggling. I understand so much about request smuggling now, having made even half that video than I did when I started. And I'd really recommend teaching others as soon as you can. When I made my first video, I'd been bug hunting for months. <laughs> Like, not even that long, um, but I knew that this was one thing that I understood and that I could talk about. So even though I'd been bug hunting three months, four months, um, I could still sit there and contribute something, right? Um, so I may not understand it when I first start, but by the time I finish, I really do understand it. Uh, and if you're like me, maybe you end up with a successful YouTube channel and you end up with having, you know, 20,000 people say how much they like the way you explain things. Um, and that's just, it's so, it's so nice to know that I've also given back to others as well. So I really recommend teaching others, whether that's on Discord, whether that's making videos, writing blog posts, uh, mentoring somebody, collaborating with somebody can be a great way to teach each other, creating a study group, what have you. I really recommend it. Number three is understanding the way you work. Now, for me, this has been a huge time investment, as in it's taken me like six years to figure out the best way I work. Um, and for me to read a lot of books and to kind of try a lot of methods. Um, but actually being able to understand the way I work now has been such a huge help in making me more productive and less tired and actually have the time to manage bug bounties and the rest of my life. Like, it's not just um, do bug bounties or do this, it's do both, right? Um, so for me, I feel more in control. It took me a long time to figure out how it, how it was for me and for me it was the deep work versus shallow work really resonated with me. Um, but now I feel like I can make time for bug bounties and really not just make time but really focus on it and for some of the vulnerabilities that I like to hunt for um quite a lot of my time is spent going through things one at a time and keeping up my motivation has been really important uh and you know this for me has been such a massive like for me getting like not just going from finding one bug to being able to like consistently find bugs understanding the way I work has been huge for that and my second one is number four, learn a lot, focus when you need to. So I disagree with people on this. Some people say you should focus on one vulnerability and that's it, you should just look for that in a bunch of different programs. I disagree. 
um, for the sole reason that you're going to miss other easy vulnerabilities. What I think is that you should focus on a few. Um, like for me, when I go into something, I'm immediately deciding what I'm focusing on. You know, business logic, idols, um, are the two vulnerabilities I find a lot. So for me, those are the two I'm always keeping uh, my, my brain on. But I don't discount the fact that there might be cross-site scripting. I still, you know, put in a blind XSS payload if I think it might be there. For me, what I like to do is focus on a few vulnerabilities and to do a deep dive when you need to. I think your time spent learning the sign of multiple vulnerabilities is much more useful than going from program to program to program to program, just spreading payloads as much as you can. Um, I think it's better to have a focused approach because I think you're more likely to find bugs. Um, so my advice would be learn a lot. And I don't mean learn a lot as in like learn every single vulnerability. I mean, learn a few vulnerabilities, but specifically the signs of them. Don't just learn one vulnerability and hunt for it everywhere. I don't think that works as well. Um, but people disagree, right? This is just my opinion. You can, you don't have to do this. <laughs> you can go do something else. It's fine. Um, and number five here is taking notes. Now, note taking can take a really long time. I, I take notes myself. I even release my notes on Patreon. Um, so it takes a long time to, to look at, to like, I read something, I watch something, um, so for me, being able to uh, take notes, it takes a while. I have to write things neatly so I can read them. Um, still, like, it takes a long time. It takes time. <laughs> but actually taking that time, even if your notes are vague, even if you don't really, um, like, get it 100%, it will help the things you read and watch sink in more. It will help you think, oh, yeah, I should give that a go or I should try that. Or, you know, going back to the previous one, if you find a sign of a vulnerability and you're like, oh, I've heard that somewhere before, you can go back to your notes. Um, and if they're searchable, it's even better because then you can just search through your notes for a term like IDOR sign or XSS or WAF bypass, right? So taking notes and just having a kind of knowledge base of your own bug hunting, right? A huge, huge advantage in like being a bug hunt being a bug hunter and finding your first bug because you're not just working from zero all the time uh you've got that kind of backlog backlog of um of stuff so i know that's a lot uh this is my entire organizational system um and you can kind of read this but i've got a full video coming next week that will go over each one but this is a bit of a, a bit of a sneak peek um so with that thank you very much for watching um i hope you found these five investments interesting useful um i hope that you'll be part of a community that you'll start teaching others you'll understand and do some reflection on how you best work uh i hope that you find your first bug and seriously if you've got note taking advice please please send me things i love seeing how other people take notes it's so useful for my own, like, how I think about my own, like, bug hunting practice and how I build up my own knowledge bases. I've got to thank Integrity again for sponsoring my content. I don't take having an advertiser on the channel lightly. It obviously, like, there's quite a lot there in knowing that they produce good things, that are good people. Um, but they, they really do amazing things for the community. They're always replying to hackers. They're so active. They're like they never ghost people it's great um and for me it's made me to make so many investments in my channel like improving the audio improving the editing i'm looking at seeing if i could get a camera maybe and do like a face cam and um, because i talk with my hands and i think quite a lot of what makes me interesting to listen to is the fact that i wave my hands around <laughs> um please do give them a lot of love you can sign up with my link on screen that's go.integrity.com forward slash katie it's in the video description um it's now time for me to read out my 10 pound channel director patreons so special thanks this week go to penny mecca infosec wardle castles rl1k strongbeard guinevale ram and James Clee. Thank you to all of my Patreons for directly supporting my content and my channel. It means so much to me to know that, you know, if YouTube decides that they no longer want my videos on the platform, that I still have at least, you know, something from my videos and that they're still worth making 
and investing the time into. Um, I really appreciate you all. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone. <laughs>